Okay, we are on to the next concept in this section R4, which is the review of basic concepts, and this section is about factoring. So we've already learned how to factor out a greatest common factor, or in short, a GCF, greatest common factor. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to use this concept to learn another one. And the other one is called grouping. And so essentially, whenever you have four terms in your polynomial, you want to attempt to group them into two groups of two. And then you can factor out the GCF of both groups. And then you can factor out the overall GCF of the entire polynomial. So for instance, this here, I've got four terms. So I'm gonna cut the polynomial in half to create two groups. Now, when you cut it in half, remember that the sign belongs to the number after it. So this plus sign belongs to that five. So when I draw my line to cut this in half, I have to make sure that I keep that plus sign with the five. Then what do these two guys have in common? They both have an R squared, and that seems to be about it. So if I factor out that GCF, and if I were to divide both of these terms by R squared, I would end up with S plus three. Here, whatever this sign is in the middle, you must use that same sign here. Okay, then this two sides can both be divided by five, but since this term does not have an S, they do not have an S in common, which means I cannot include an S in my GCF. Whatever sign you get here, that's what you have to divide both of these terms by. So a positive five divided by a positive five is one, and then you've got the variable S. So you have one S, which you don't really write the one coefficient. Then positive 15 divided by positive 15 is a positive 3. And so then now we factor out the overall GCF of the whole polynomial. So you'll notice that this side and this side have S plus 3 in common. And if I divide both of these by S plus 3, it cancels there, leaving me with r squared, and it cancels here, leaving me with plus 5. And now I've got my two binomials. I've got a product of two factors that should equal this. So if you want to check it, remember how you check it. You have to multiply it out, and this should equate to the original. So s times r squared is s r squared s times 5 is 5s, 3 times r squared is 3r squared, and 3 times 5 is 15. Here we have r squared s, got it there. Here we have 3r squared positive, 3r squared positive, got that one. Here we have positive 5s, positive 5s, positive 15, positive 15. So we do have an expression that is equivalent to the original. Therefore, this is the correct answer. So you never have to wonder if you actually have the correct answer. If you multiply it out, it should um, work itself out. So let's see the next one. Here, if I cut it in half, remember this plus belongs to that term. And this side does not have anything in common. These are m's and these are n's. So since they have nothing in common, the most you can factor out is a one. Can always divide by one, right? When you do that though, you end up with the same exact expression on the inside because anything divided by one is the same thing. We have to use this plus sign here and then this side actually has a little n in common. So if I divide this side by plus n, positive n, 
positive and a positive is a positive. The ends will cancel, leaving me with a positive 4. A negative divided by a positive is negative. The ends will cancel, but I'll still have m squared. Hmm. Notice that when I try to factor the whole thing, this term and this term do not match. Whereas before, they did match. Okay. If this happens, it is possible that the original problem could still be um, factored. The only issue is, is that the order that the terms were in did not lend itself to the grouping method. So what you can do is switch terms. Now when you do this, you have to be careful. You have to make sure that you put them in order where things make sense. So. I'm going to keep my um, 4m squared in the front. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab either this term or this term next. It doesn't matter, but what you choose will dictate what you do next. Okay? So I notice that this term has a 4 in common, like my 4m squared, and this term has a minus m squared, so it has an m squared in common. So I need to choose one of these to write next. Now let's say for instance I choose m squared n. That's fine. But if you imagine that the m squared are not there, you have a 4 in front and an n in the back. So I've already used this term. Oops, this pen is not working. Give me one second. I'm trying to grab my colored pins. Um, and it seems my children have grabbed my colored pins, but we'll um, make do with what we've got and try. Yeah, that was out. Okay. So we've already used. 4m squared, and we've already used this minus m squared. I still have two terms that I haven't written down yet. Now, because I have the term with the 4 in the front, that means I'm going to have to write the term with the 4 next, which leaves the only term left, minus m squared. Now, had I chosen to write, instead of this, put the two terms with the 4s together, Um, then that would have left me with these two terms and I would have had to have recognized that the m squared term should go first and then the extra n should go next. So this term would have to go first and then that term last. Oops, I put an extra minus in there. Okay. Now, regardless of which way you ordered it, both of them should yield the same answer. So I'm going to go through this one thoroughly because I have more space. And then I'll do this one really quick and you can verify it later if you choose to. So here, this plus sign belongs to that 4, so I'm going to chop that in half. Both of these two terms have an m squared in common. So if I were to take out that m squared, I would end up with 4 minus n. Here we have to use the plus sign. And these two guys have an n in common. So if I divide by a positive n here, this will become 4 positive. This will become minus, that'll cancel 1, but I'll still have n. Then both sides will have a 4 minus n in common. And when I take out the 4 minus n for both terms, I end up with m squared plus n. Okay, so this is what we end up with. 4 times m squared is 4m squared. 4 times positive n is positive 4n. Negative n times m squared is negative m squared n. Negative n times positive n is negative n squared. So it does check out. Now here, I would factor out a 4. And here, I would factor out, well, I'd have to use this sign 
and I'd factor out an in. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. The ins would cancel, giving me m squared. A negative divided by a negative would be positive, and n squared divided by n is a single n. So they have the m squared plus n's in common, and if I factor those out, I'm left with n, 4 minus n. Notice these are the exact two same expressions. It's just here I have the 4 minus n in the front, and here I have the 4 minus n in the back. It doesn't matter whether you multiply two times three or you multiply three times two. The product will still be the same. And the computer understands that and will accept either version of this answer, okay? So we've got one more in this category and then we're going to talk about factoring trinomials next. So here, Let's try it without rearranging it first. So we're going to cut this in half. This side can be divided by 3, and they both have a y squared. This one has an extra y, but they have to have it in common in order for me to factor it out. So then if I divide this by 3y squared, I get 3 with an extra y minus 5 and the y's cancel. Here I have to use this plus sign. This side can be divided by two. So positive two, positive two. Um, here I'll get a positive three y and I'll get a minus five. They both happen to have three y minus five in common. So I get three y squared plus two left over. I always just cancel them like that because I'm factoring them out and then you end up with 3y squared plus 2. It just saves the writing of having to put that thing in the parentheses downstairs and then cancel them out. Okay, so now we've got that. And you can always double check it. 3y times 3y squared is 9y cubed. 3y times positive 2 is positive 6y. Negative 5 times 3y squared is negative 15y squared, and negative 5 times positive 2 is negative 10. So this does check out. Um, even though I'm on the same page, I'm going to cut the video here because I want to have a video of factoring trinomials all on its own.